Um, we've already talked about what medical communication is all about, and of course communication can take different forms that is no different in a medical context. You can talk socially, you can talk professionally, you can interact and engage. Um, we'll see that um, there's different forms and that takes different kinds of people. Um, what people always do in communication is making adjustments. If you adjust to your partner in interaction, you make sure that the communication improves and that your relationship improves. So making adjustments is part of successful interactions and that makes society tick. If we don't adjust, um, we might have problems. Um, also, adjustment is done in a particular way and may not be um, experienced or interpreted in the same way as what we need to. Now, the quality of communication between doctors and patients and between doctors and fellow healthcare professionals influences the outcome of the patient care and health outcomes in general. And that is a very important thing which we have to take into account. Doctor-patient communication is one form of interaction and what we see there is that effective clinical functioning is what everyone in there tries to achieve but that there is a lot of linguistic and cultural challenges even for native speaking doctors. So because it's a problem or a challenge for native speaking doctors, um, I think we should open it and leave it open. Because there is uh, a lot of uh, linguistic and cultural challenges, there's guidelines which have been formulated, um, evidence-based guidelines for medical communication skills, like for instance the Paul Green Cambridge guides. Well, medical doctors in the West nowadays are being trained on the basis of these guidelines. These guidelines which are skills-based, which talk about how to treat your patient, how to be an active listener, how to smile convincingly, what to do in management uh, situations. Well, it's all there for native-speaking doctors. The second type of uh, communication that uh, medical doctors engage in is the doctor-colleague interaction. And this is a type of communication we often forget but it's the type of communication that is so important in business context. Who are these colleagues? Well, they're equal colleagues, but often also colleagues on a higher level, so there's a little bit of a power distance. Nurses, and as I already told you, nurses, well, they come in different shapes and sizes, and you have to be on good footing with nurses because they are really important. And other medical staff, of course, administrative or otherwise. Why is doctor-colleague interaction so important? Well, because they are the situation or the context in which handoffs take place. So when patients are carried over, information has to be transferred as well. Exchange of patient information, and that has direct consequences for patient health. And we know of cases in the United Kingdom where that completely went wrong and patients have died because of bad handoffs. A second, uh, um, doctor-colleague interaction a context is the communicative climate of the workplace. You cannot do without communication. It has an effect on job satisfaction and on general well-being. And it's the general well-being that we care for. At least, well, we spend a lot of time in our workplace. And that time, one third of our daily life, minimum, um, should be well spent. If we feel bad, then our home life won't look very rosy either. The third type of interaction is the professional advancement. If we have good relationship with our colleagues, well, we'll get good reviews and we will not be passed over for additional responsibilities or possibly also promotions. So this type of interaction is one which hasn't been studied a lot. Now, when we look at mobile medical professionals, we see that the migration is of healthcare professional is uh, increasing. We also see that um, doctors working and living in a culture and language that's not their own, they face a unique set of communicative challenges because the type of communication they engage in is inherently intergroup. They become
become a member of a group, and that group has a specific type of communication setting which they have to live up to. As such, that is often problematic. I don't like to function in groups. I'm a little bit of a lonely person. I like to walk the woods of northern Scandinavia, and I don't like to walk in the street or the streets of the crowd in Rome. So, yeah, there is some, some challenge and tension going on there. Um, what we also see is that for mobile medical professionals, this is double so, because they must not only handle the fact that they become a part of a group, that they become a member of a group, but also that they have to do this in a foreign language and a foreign culture, and that the rules are not always uh, clearly defined. Now, most research has been done on doctor-patient communication, primarily in the United States, Canada, Australia. You heard about it earlier on, uh, the countries where a lot of migration has uh, uh, been going on for a long time. And what we also see <coughs> is that when studies are done on foreigners coming into the community, then it's often medical graduates, these young people who see the world open up in front of them, and let's see how frightened they are of this new world. That's the type of studies I'm talking about. Now, when we talk about um, different languages being used, it's often the patient perspective that is taken there. So it's often looked at how foreign language speaking patients communicate with the help or not <coughs> with the help of a translator, interpreter, a mediator. Now, in the language support guides, the Calgary uh, Cambridge guides, for instance, we see that this type of communication between people who don't speak the same language is just passed off as, hmm, yeah, well, it's an issue. It's an issue like um, a worrying patient. It's on equal levels. So speaking a different language, using a different language in a professional medical context is seen as a little barrier but it's not a tremendous barrier. You have to speak loudly, clearly, repeat what you say, do your best, and then that will be solved. But that, of course, has to do with the fact that not a lot of research has been carried out on this type of doctors. So the present study looked at communication in the workplace, um, communication by non-native uh, speaking doctors or by mobile medical professionals in five European countries. And we asked two questions. How do these mobile medical professionals perceive their own communication when engaging in social, professional, and public interactions with colleagues and superiors? And how the, do these colleagues and superiors perceive and evaluate their communication across these contexts? So we looked at it from the two perspectives. <coughs> we um, uh, had 134 questionnaires as inputs and 44 interviews with native colleagues and we asked okay do people adjust their communication and how do they do this <coughs> and you will see that adjusting communication is a little bit tricky what did the mobile medical <coughs> professionals think of themselves well they thought that they felt really good in their environment they felt relatively confident across the different contexts <coughs> and they also felt that their superiors regarded them as competent when they used the host language. So there is a good feeling all over. They see that there is certain contexts where um, they have problems, and these contexts are attending staff meetings, doing presentations, replying to questions, or uh, presenting cases, and communicating with superiors <coughs> on a social and professional level. And I have to say that we did some, I know for our statistics, so um, across the, the different uh, contexts. This is not at all surprising, because for native speakers, talking to um, superiors and speaking in public is also a little bit of a problem. Now, how do, the, um, how do they perceive their own needs? Well, they think that they have problems with oral communication, they're not fluent enough, and telephony is terribly difficult. They also see that everyday medical language is a problem and that pronunciation could be worked at and that they need more idioms, more vocabulary. And dialects, well, that's something the native speakers have to do. with. So our mobile doctors are aware that something has to be trained. Now, is this 
the same perception with their superiors. Well, the superiors say, we really love these mobile medical professionals. We need them, and I really appreciate it. But there are some problems. There's some communication issues, like they have difficulties with small talk, pronunciation and intonation, slightly difficult. And their intonation is so bad sometimes that they seem rude and offensive. Mm -hmm. They do declarative sentences. They don't do intonations with mm -hmm. interrogative sentences. Uh, they don't do that because maybe it's exaggerated. And their non-verbal uh, communication, eye contact, haptics, the touching, the distance between people, um, they don't know and they don't do it. And they're not aware that it sets the tone of the um, social interaction. But there's also social cultural issues. Sometimes they have a different understanding of health issues. They uh, prescribe antibiotics like mad. They prescribe more painkillers than we do. And mm -hmm. sick leave, well, they have a different attitude to prescribing sick leave. So different norms and practices which are really uh, well defined in the guidelines. So we see that there is some convergence and that there is some divergence. The supervisors and trainers have five elements they really think are important. And these five elements are low on the agenda of our mobile medical professionals, like um, humor and stressful and new situations, communicating bad news. Our mobile professionals don't think that they do bad on this uh, level, but the supervisors see some problems there. But luckily enough, there are also some shared concerns um, with pronunciation and communication with um, more than two people or communicating for administrative purposes. And this gets us back to the, my first question. How do they accommodate their communication? So how do people um, try to share um, the communicative scene? Well, there's some problems there as well. The mobile medical professionals feel confident and think that they're also competent. The colleagues report communication problems, and um, these problems are not really at linguistic level. They're not really concerned with the language. Of course, you see them in the language, but they are problems that have to do with the deeper level of how they understand that communication is perceived and that communication is carried out. And our mobile doctors are not really aware of it. Awareness seems to be a crucial factor. What are they not aware of? Well, local cultural norms about workplace uh, practices. You have to come and share a coffee. You have to drink coffee at 10, even though you're afraid of being asked questions in a loud room with many people. Try to get away with it. Try to understand, try to engage. When people speak a dialect during the coffee break, try to ask them to explain. Don't give up. Don't assume that by nodding, they will think that you understand them. Also, uh, problems with understanding of health issues and conversational strategies when more than two people are involved. And strategies really to make sure that um, conversational communication is going. So, what I think uh, we found in this perspective is that indeed um, we see in presentation skills, um, they are difficult, but this is something we can help medical doctors with. And um, also everything to do with dialects, humor, more than two or three colleagues present. Well, we hope that with Medics on the Move that we have developed a tool where we can go from the question mark and the breaking up of the communication to um, a speech bulb where at least people are able to say medics on the move at the same speed and in the same intonation. This concludes my presentation and I hope that you enjoyed it.